Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about Mumbat, Quack Walker, and the legal abolition of slavery in Massachusetts. Slavery was introduced into England's American colonies in 1619 when a Dutch ship brought the first enslaved Africans to Jamestown in Virginia. Over the following 160 years, slavery spread throughout the colonies. By the time of the American Revolution and the Declaration of Independence, every colony allowed and profited from the practice of slavery. In 1780, while the United States were still struggling for their independence from Great Britain, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts ratified a new constitution. John Adams, the principal author of the document, was opposed to slavery and a firm believer in the rights to liberty for all people. Article one of this new constitution stated, all men are born free and equal and have certain natural, essential, and unalienable rights, among which may be reckoned the right of enjoying and defending their lives and liberties. The following year, 1781, an enslaved woman named Mumbet, also known as Elizabeth Freeman, sued for her freedom. Mumbet had been enslaved in the household of John Ashley in Western Massachusetts. Ashley was himself a prominent patriot during the revolution, and his home was often a center of discussion for ideas of liberty and individual rights. It is likely that Mumbet overheard and was inspired by those ideas. After an altercation with Ashley's wife, Mumbet fled to the house of Theodore Sedgwick, a lawyer and abolitionist. Sedgwick agreed to represent Mumbet in her quest for freedom, and in August 1781 brought suit against Ashley. Pleading his case before the Berkshire County Court of Common Pleas, Sedgwick argued that the newly ratified Massachusetts Constitution abolished slavery. The jury agreed and declared Mumbet free. Shortly thereafter, another series of court cases reaffirmed the unconstitutional nature of slavery in Massachusetts. Quack Walker had been enslaved in the household of James Caldwell. When Caldwell died in 1763, Walker became the property of Caldwell's widow, who soon remarried. The new husband, Nathaniel Jennison, now claimed ownership of Walker. In 1781, Walker fled from the Jennison household, but was pursued, recaptured, and beaten. As a result, Walker, with the aid of local attorneys, sued Jennison for assault and battery. Walker claimed that Caldwell had promised to manumit him, that he was, in fact, a free man, and that Jennison's actions were therefore illegal. In December 1781, two cases, the one brought by Walker and a countersuit by Jennison, were heard in court. The results of the two cases were somewhat contradictory. In the first, Walker was declared a free man, but in the second, Jennison was compensated for the loss of his property. A third trial surrounding the Quack Walker case was eventually held in 1783 in the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts. The 1781 incident had led to a criminal indictment against Jennison for assaulting Walker. In his instructions to the jury, Chief Justice William Cushing stated that slavery was inconsistent with the Constitution of the Commonwealth and therefore was illegal. The jury agreed, found Jennison guilty of assault, and fined him. The legal decisions in the Mumbet and Quack Walker cases essentially ended slavery in Massachusetts. During the first half of the 19th century, Massachusetts was a center of abolitionist sentiment in the United States. Despite that, the state legislature never passed a law formally abolishing slavery. It was the ratification of the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1865 that finally and emphatically ended slavery. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.